Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero, Psych Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting one, Mrs. One, and a whole lot new fan. Between these, we got Theodosius, fighting for the Soviet Union. Comrade Stalin, taking on the role here of the glorious Third Mechanized Corps. Tasked with bashing its way through the fascist lines and opening up the way to Berlin. Versus in the West, we got Arefero, fighting for Germany, Deutschland, Das Reich. Rolling out here with the oh I don't know let's just say Feldherrn Halle Panzergrenadier with Lightning War Mobile Defense and German Mechanized versus Guard Rifle Guard Motor and Mechanized Support with Infantry Guard Rifle Bullets and Pacific Fire to Tank Rifle Penetration there and T Fed of Hood Fires versus Triple Infantry therefore Defero and the German Army. They got a lot of consequences there for Theodosius so far at least with double grenadiers there for Defero no sign of machine guns. Heading centre Norfolk. <clears throat> Some light chatting there, it seems. On infantry. In this case, sticking with the Grenadiers. With a third one on the way, though, there certainly seems to be a lot of thought lately with the Amak just sticking to Grenadiers because it's increasingly, at least for a lot of players, it feels like the one thing that works. We got a third consequence over there for Theodosius. Of course, it's nothing they also discussed just buffing the Grenadiers more rather than just maybe looking to everything else but the Grenadiers. But there you go, Sam picking up here, Bart Wire, sort of very good work here by both sides so far, very methodical. Third Grenadier squad there for Defero, will be going for any MD 42s, it will just be old Grenadiers here. I mean, some players will go for a bunch of infantry feet, then follow up machine guns, for example. And we got here just more part wire. Theodosius can soon go for fourth country squad. He could also go for early Molotovs here, which was the Wehrmacht tends to be a pretty good upgrade, especially with his machine guns. Fourth country squad there for Theodosius. Refero possibly are going to go for another Grenadier squad. Shots fired there. Grenadier's being pushed back. He could also go for a mortar. And there you go. He does go for the MU42 after the initial Grenadier push there for Germany. Grenadier's in the church. Could actually go straight for the calf point since uh, Theodosius' efforts are more sent around the flank. So a quick push there could force Theodosius to have to attract forces to defend that point. So this could be sort of a very good pressure point here for Ferrero to hit. In particular, then consider you keep a machine gun nearby, and that could make things really awkward. Of course, it also risks leaving the northern fuel point they exposed. So it's sort of something there, but I definitely think they're going to do more good here than there. Personally, in the south, Grenadiers they're being threatened by a lot of Russians. We got a mines being laid down here through Dosia to help protect any pushes through here to put fuel point that way. Wiring off here as well, good work. He could actually lay down a mine there as well, would be a good spot since the bar wire essentially acts like a funnel towards it. But uh, so far, both players here not particularly overly aggressive, both sizing each other up, not making any direct moves as of yet. So, both players here cautious, prudent. And non too aggressive. But there you go. Theodosius is preparing for a big push. Yeah, Refro going so quiet. Usually from a surf plane, particularly one with a lot of conscripts, you usually expect a bit more sort of pushing here and there. But Theodosius so far has been, I think, very cautious here around Refro. And but it's there we go, revealing his hand at least in the north. The two conscripts are pushing towards the fuel pond there. It's going to need to get the machine gun up there, but the machine gun is actually around the church, which could allow him to sort of push for the fuel pond here. Though again, it feels a bit weird he's he's not, you know, doing more here. But now he's going to have to force troops up north here, or send troops up there. Of course, it can sort of create a no-go zone here for Theodosis, which certainly has its benefits for Efero, though the machine gun does need to point in the other direction. Hey, Fred, yeah, maybe we should point some machine gun gear where the Russians are more likely to come from. But I don't want to, they're so ugly to look at. And there you go, though. Comes to flank in here from the south with flame as well, but there you go, before just going to be able to catch the entire force, and this regard Theodosis, so this split the force, I think, a bit better. Also noting no Molotovs here, so once the inflame for a team is basically sort of dealt with, there's no other way of sort of pushing out the machine gun easily. But of course in this case, pushed away, they did some damage. Up north they're hitting the fuel pond as well. So overall two doses here. While again not immediately aggressive though, makes for some reasonably good push. Though, okay, right here there was a slight flaw of the units being bunched up a bit too much. Meanwhile though in the north he's making good progress here versus Refero, and Refero's gonna have to dispatch force to deal with that. We got a second pioneer squad here as well for Refero and the Feldhand Halle Panzer Grenadier Division. Country court there suppressed. Some damage done here. He got medics up there for Theodosius as well. He's got bare manpower fuel floating. No tech up though. And no upgrades beside the medics. No sign of doctor either. You gotta like to make a nice company going up here in Refro's base. Hence why I went for the second pioneer squad so he doesn't have to pull back troops 
from the front line in fact tends to be what a lot of Bama players just do they just build another pioneer squad because it actually hurts them more to have to pull back a pioneer squad from the front line thus losing front line presence which is actually pretty big and certainly I think just also highlights a bit the weakness of how the whole Bama is supposed to you know work in terms of taking all that but there you go, Gunners pushing it into the concrete, they're going to get all well, but still it does draw away Theodosius just a bit further from the fuel point, and even though he's continuing pressure harassment here against Theodosius, good work there, though he's going to have to carry back that fuel point soon, Theodosius has tech, support and company, and we got Maximus on the way. Like to make a nice company up, could go for Panzergandis, 251s at 222s, so a few options there for a Refero. A Danish player by the way, if I'm not mistaken. Also, big thanks to Marcus for donating and support the propaganda cast, allowing me to keep doing what I do day after day. And remember, you too can support me and allow me to keep well doing it. Since, you know, money does go towards food, rent, and who knows, even maybe the occasional gain, though that's very rare. So, anyways, do feel free to support for our Patreon and PayPal. The link's in the video description. Got these pioneers of us, the uh, contrast to push for the fuel pump this time, the Thedosis force is a bit more extended. Not enough support here to the north, as he's been, you know set down here to the south to sort of deal with the uh, referee's harassment that's relieving pressure off him which again is why you know harassment can be such a good thing it can actually you know, force your opponent to sort of dispatch force away weakening his assaults so far though nothing out of the like to make a nice company half jacks there open it two to twos and of course panzer gun ideas Noting no light machine upgrades yet for the Gunnadies. Ah, oh, we got a mortar there for Refro, a bit of a tiller support. And you thought to reposition here from the church as his position get perhaps a bit too exposed. No Molotovs yet for Theodosius. And we got the maximum there heading northward. So overall, I mean, Theodosius is putting up a lot of pressure here and there. The Refro is doing his best to, you know, push him back to repulse him in the name of the fatherland, Germany. And here, Panis are enforcing the cover from the Gunnadies against gaining the continent the position. That's going to think be a win here for Refro. Should be a win, otherwise something that very, very wrong. Conscripts occupying the church and nine position there for Fidefro. More conscripts sending out there from the base and up north. Maximum they're pushing back a pioneer squad. Could be flanked here by the Grenadiers. And there you go, conscripts and running by the pioneer Grenadier combo. Good work. Negative card, but being caught out in the open here. Tiny chance, I suppose, of dealing with it, but uh, seems less likely then, particularly since you. Oh, no! Does end up with a treat here. It does end up with a treat. Theodosius just simply feels like he can't afford to hang about any longer. It's also putting resources there. Could easily stand to take up. Push out maybe a fast light vehicle. Doctrinal options also I think available there for Theodosius. But there you go. Got the Granada Mev opening up here for Refro. Hammering away at Bolshevik positions. Molotovs the would be I think a good upgrade here for Theodosius. It's overall a very good investment after they basically buffed it by making the upgrade cheaper, but also making the Molotovs run faster. That is a really big benefit. We got a second gear squad here, probably partly from Minesweepers, more than maybe more flamethrowers, but of course also just helping me, you know, tanking out, which is definitely one thing you could benefit from. As for Refro, though, nothing's still happening. The like to make a nice company is up, but nothing is appearing from it. Again, no Panzer gonna do, no light vehicles, not in a pet forty. There we go, though. Hardened Panzer Grenadier veterans who have seen much action. Much death. And there you go. Russians also being assaulted in the north. Gonna use there. Bit unknown, being overwhelmed by Russian firepower, who quickly pushes them back. Tank of the tank command up here for Theodosia, opening up for light vehicles. In the south, they got Kansas going about. They're gonna use them moving into flank. As I know, both the Russian army and the German army operated on infiltration tactics as part of the infantry doctrine. I mean, they actually looking to outmaneuver the enemy without necessarily just running straight on at them. So, a little fun fact there. A little fun fact there. And this is quite here what Refro does to looking out the front line. He's just, you know, hitting weaker spots, forcing his opponent to react, and then just even outmaneuvering him. So, good work there by Refro. On the other hand, the Americans did not work on that concept. Infiltration tactics leaves not a lot. Gonna lose the the conscripts. Also got one lap machine up now here for Refro and the Feltan Halle. We got Panzer gonna lose there, heading southward to support as well here. That should be able to overwhelm the conscripts support there easily. In the center, machine gun fire holding back the Udotis, who's gone for, there we go, one minesweeper team. In case Refro has been laying down mines, I do believe there has been some late at some point. I can't quite remember where he popped them down. And we can also see a reference going from Mines with his own having it. One mine from Theodosius, he's taking no chances either. 
Could, I think, get away with taking out now. Nah. Though, he's going to need a pack 40 first, since we got the T-70 out here for Theodosius. T-70 light tank punch was there at the edge of the point, but occasionally it happens that they actually don't register the point as being secured there, so... We got the T-70 and engaging going to these pioneers, forcing retreat. He's going to also have to retreat the punch going to these soon enough before the T-70 light tank tears them apart. Come on, Dimitri, you can do better than that. There we go, the fascist. Up north, going to the holding map machine guns, really pushing away Theodosius' troops. Back at base, nothing further going on for him, and we got no sign of Dr. Tier from either player. Theoretically, Verfa was worried about the T-70 to a large degree and wanted to push it. He could go for mobile defense, pull out a Puma, but he's going for the Pack 40, so it's more like just trying to take more aggressively hit, meaning either Lightning War or Mechanized. The Lightning War, I think, is still sort of more the typical, you know, number one doctrine for a lot of Vermont players, but theoretically, Referral could aim for Joan Mechanized instead. We got the Pack 40 out here, the Panzer up there, can only feel sick. Panzer, they're attacking the Grenadiers, but there we go, the tank support, the Grenadiers stand no chance. Ultimate mines being laid down. Just attempted being laid down here in support of the assault. This one making it harder left for effort to counter attack. Now they're going to do hiding out in the house here, but without a light machine gun, they're not going to offer too much resistance. And of course, not even considering there's a T7 nearby, which they can't really do anything with. I mean, theoretically, could they fire the Panzer first from the house? You could actually do that. But it would require you to open all windows, all doors, and clear out any furniture inside. Otherwise, you'd risk being killed by the back blast. Same, I imagine, will apply by way for the Panzer Shrek. So, little fun fact there. Little fun fact there about Panzer Faust and Panzer Shrek operation. Oops. Could pop into the armor around here on the MD42 to quickly the fourth back. We got here more out for Theodosius, just a regular one. So, no guard motor here from Theodosius. And the third mechanized course, it tears away here at Refro's forces. And you need support by the match, and they're putting quite a problem for Pack 40. Quickly, big loss here for Theodos. Oh, Refro. Oh, dear. Definitely bad here for Refro. He loses a Pack 40 to Theodosius. A Refro, though, is taking up here. And up north, going to be being swarmed by Russian infantry. <laughs> Forcing retreat there, also leaving the northern fuel point there in Theodosius' hand, giving him two fuel points, which could easily you know, facilitate a quick move towards the next tier and T 34 76s, or even possibly. 85s, which considering he's got doctrines for that, certainly seems uh, highly likely. He could also, though, give a key ones. And there's several options here for Theodosius at the moment versus Refero. <laughs> All the team there flying away in there. He does go for Gart Rifle. He does go for Gart Rifle. Opening up for some machine guns, which obviously his stocks and uh, very much, or his forces very much lack since he's got a lot of conscripts. Fun fact, as the Russian army sort of advanced throughout the years, it actually increasingly added a larger number of submachine guns to its overall standard force. Initially, submachine guns sort of was just organized for, I think, company levels. Like they had sort of entire company sized forces just with submachine guns. But as I saw, the war progressed, even just sort of basic riflemen were heavily equipped with submachine guns. I think by like late stages, like 1944 45, like half of Russian rifle division, for example, would be equipped with such machine guns as just gave them so much firepower on the move. So, a few fun facts there about Soviet organization and usage of such machine guns. As the Russians increasingly favor just automatic firepower, which of course the Germans altered it in their own way. Of course, they focus on light machine guns and assault rifles. They didn't quite put the same emphasis on such machine guns that the Soviets did. Panzer going to they're heading out with their Sturmgewehr 44. Mortar in positioning up there, mine spotted. Mines were there easily paying off for their throw in the center. We got the M4 tree hammering away. Vetchy 2 gained, easily pinning down there with that. Very good. And I'm making it, Refro is going to go for a Panzer 4. Still no son of Doctor there for Refro. We got Theodosius with the mechanized armor company here. K1 so T34 for the sixes. He just needs to pick his poison. Some machine gun wielding comes to them again against the Gunnadis, the Pioneers, Gunnadis holding up inside the house, Pioneers doing the can in front of it. And there you go, Comes with taking some losses, Pioneers retreating, there you go, T7 going to provide further support here, Pioneers about to get wiped out. Referee in this case though gets a 
bit lucky, but that was pretty damn close. Light Machine Team doing a lot of damage to the country. There goes second Light Machine Team coming up from the country as well, catching them in a deadly crossfire. They'll see many a man dead. But no, he moves away. The Chief Sandy provides sufficient support here for the country, so they are low on health, and he might pop into the shed instead. No. Nope. And there you go, Panzer IV, the Forefro, and the Feltan Halle, provided from a nearby Panzer Division. In the centre, they got the pressure here, though. I think Theodosius might want to lay down some smoke screens or something instead of just timing away. And he would really benefit from Molotovs on the submachine wheel in Kranzgrip, since those really two really go too well together. Kranzgrip almost wiped out. T-17 hits of the Pack 40. Theodosius in Northern Push encounters a severe German resistance. In the centre, Theodosius is not making much progress either. He's not far off from a T-3476, the K-1 though is a bit further off. Panzer is still hiding there, waiting to ambush any unfortunate rations. Don't worry Dimitri, I think the coast is clear. Oh shit, they're behind us. Yet. And apparently they weren't even paying attention, at least uh, Theodosius weren't maximum. They need to get away before it gets swiped up, very close there. Gonna dislike him from the north with Veterinary 3. Expert marksman with the Karnan TK and the light machine gun. On all further fighting going on here, pushing back Refuse forces. Panzer for the ramming here to support the Feldhand Halle, sent in by the nearby 10th Panzer Division. In fact, not uncommon for the German Panzer Division to actually find their armor scattered all across the place, which really decreased their offensive firepower. Though, of course, was necessary for the most of the defensive fighting, the Wehrmacht was increasingly forced into as war progressed. Machine on the way there. Can't they're half dead. That Panzer Ball started having quite an impact here for Refero. And there you go, Kansa flanking in with some anti tank grenades ready. But no Molotovs. No Molotovs. T Fed Force from 6 to almost down for Theodosius. Comes are getting picked off there by the Panzer IV. Gonna do this for Light Machine is also opening up there, providing a furious volley. And we got here their first Panzer and it is finally moving about doing something here for the German army. Still no sign of doctrine here though from Refero. No sign. They would certainly indicate he's aiming here for the Lightning War Doctrine and a Tiger tank, though he would need probably fuel cash to make it sure work out at a decent pace. Maybe even two fuel caches, but there you go. T-34 from 6 has arrived. You got the T-20 spotting out of the rest of his forces. Good work there. Now they push from the north, at least attempt to push soon enough. MG-42, the hiding between a few crates and some bushes. Pretty much preventing Theodosius from making use of the car when he tries to grab the uh, center victory point. Good work. So the T-34 snakes moving in there quickly. Engages the machine gun which fires back pointlessly. The Pac-40 offers uh, slightly more sharp retort to the tank. Is everybody alright? Yeah, just Pushkin lost his ear. Oh well, it's not like he did much with it anyways. <laughs> not funny. Panzer there moving in with Pioneer support going to the country. No, this is tactically not advisable. I mean, running up close to the country that actually gets into the effective range. We just fought them with the range. The Panzer gun is would be much better off. This that was tactically ill advised there by Refero. Tactically ill advised. Bit of waste of good Panzer gun ideas. Of North looking is there close being wiped out by the conscripts with the PPS 841s. Fun fact about the PPS 841 was actually a more or less a direct copy of a Finnish submachine gun. I can't quite remember the name of that one. There was also later a submachine gun they made so to support the rear line troops. It was called the PPS 43, which I think was all much cheaper to make, but overall, in many ways, I think worked largely on the same principles. So, a few fun facts there. S mines to defend of the T 34 6. Those S mines will not be of much use. You can soon go for another T 34. Of course, you could try and aim for the KV 1 next. A referee of the remains, doctrinally challenged. Oh, he's planning tier 4. Oh dear. Archer there got blasted by a mortar round. Back 
keep reinforcement healing. More engineers here for Theodosius to replace the ones lost to the fascists. Looks like Theodosius is eyeing for K1 and H85 here versus Lefero, who's there we go, built the heavy panzer corps. Still no sign of a doctrine from Lefero, still no sign of a doctrine in the southern victory point. Gonna just push away in the center, panzer all moving up here as well. Up north, victory point there being seized, and Contra setting out as well. And he does not aim for any sort of army, so he aims for the pants of ever to blast through those positions. And he still doesn't use a doctrine. Got a flare there off from Theodosius, very good work. There you go. Pack that remains in the exact same position. You shouldn't even be able to see it. So I'm not entirely sure we did it like that without necessarily just running down a smoke screen. And the thing is, oh, it does actually use it. Oh no. Actually, it was just a regular barrage just running off as well there. So ends up not doing too much there though for Theodosius. Troops getting suppressed. I mean, had he fled and then smoked this area, he could probably just push ahead, but instead he ends up uh, not really doing himself any favours when it comes to this position from Refro. Up north, though, we got two consorts here. We can gate for the Panzer IV. Refro goes in violently. So it seems like though Theodosius is aiming for the KD-1. He's saying out a lot of manpower fuel. So the KD-1 or Clement Voreshilov one is certainly the more likely candidate. No smoke screen to cut up the cops in the centre whatsoever. And there you go, we got the Panzer Werfer out here for the Refero and the Feltan Halle, also sent in by the 10th Panzer Division since only Panzer Divisions actually had access to Panzer Werfers. Fun fact. Air support called in. Red Army Aviation strikes. Almost got the MD 42 there. If the Contra thing had something seems it probably could have wiped the machine gun down retreat, but it does get a little bit of tiniest of tiniest of slivers of health. So there is some of this force being pushed back. There we go, we got the K1 on the way for Theodosius. Northern victory points of court needs to grab the center one. In the south we got a big push, or a smaller push from Refless Panzer Gun is there with a few gun and these serve. Push forwards for the victory point. And meanwhile we got IL2 Stromic circling like sharks in the sky. Catching the mortar crew here with a few very aggressive bursts. K1 almost done there for Theodosius. And there you go, Clement Wolfslow, one heavy tank arrives. North another push here. Hoorah and everything here from Theodosius. Charging at the gun of these light machine guns. Men heavily packed with sap machine guns but ultimately there's a panzer four on the way and they don't have the firepower to deal with that he's gonna have to send his tanks up there to support against that in the south panzer they quickly fall back trying to bait i think the country into a slightly more favorable fight doesn't engage deal with the panzer takes using the infantry as bait for the panzer then pushing the tanks into the center here and has the panzer ever yet to fire nope it probably actually has i think but first valley didn't really seem to have any serious impact here for referral do not seem to have any serious impact. I like how sort of guy about to, you know, alright, the firing pops in and then they don't fire. So anyways, come on guys, make up your mind. These hatches are really terrible, you know. I don't know who designs them. But it's a real pain to open up. Great hit from the pack 40 and the key one. And there you go, Panther for Barrage. I suspect he's going to try and take the engineers out. Alright. Small wipe there for Refero. More to find the Pack 40. Keep it hustling about there and direct hit there from the Pack 40. You could also just smoked it. Pretty much would make the Pack 40 much harder to operate, but now it's going in there with T7K1, maybe the T34 from 6 as well. Telemine there, but not easily spotted here by Theodosius. He's got no mines in the area. There you go, more armor pressure here, though with no real infantry support here. He's using incendiary armor piercing rounds on the MD42 against the K1. That feels rather pointless. And there you go, machine gun it's virtually three bar away. It's gonna get wiped here. They've got the Panzer IV moving in. Lost an infantry unit up here, hitting into the S minefield. That's pretty bad there for Theodosius. 
Armour's forced to fall back. He did not prioritize the pack forward, but rather the MD-42 with his tanks. When he should have taken down the other way around, maybe at least if the infantry was close, he could have prioritized the machine gun, but over it seemed like an overall uh, weirdly extra assault there by Theodosius. Panzer IV, though, almost down. Tanks are also heavily dinged up. Contrasting forces are going to try and fix steal the MD-42, maybe, or try and clear out the pack forward. The other way, he's almost got it. K1 there. Pretty close here. Ah, oh, they both miss each other. They miss each other. He's going to hit an anti-tank grenade off for the Panzer IV. Pretty big loss there for Therefore, Panzer Panzerfall down, and now Theodosius has a definite arm advantage here. He's going to have to rely on Stukes. I suppose he could try and stall for a Panther, though. A Panther's going to increasingly get risky there if Theodosius just brings out more armor. We've got Panzer the flank about here, causing a bit of disruption, routing it against Theodosius. And the third mechanized core here, the Feldhahn Halle launches another glorious assault for the Fatherland. Mine goes off there, killing a few Panzer going to deal it. Panzerwerfer still operable. Going back to the fuel point here. Panzerwerfer needs to be careful. They could be rushed, though. Theodosius might be a bit hesitant about that, considering most of his armor pool is looking pretty beaten up. Another MD-42 to replace the one lost to the Russians, since Theodosius claimed the other one for the motherland. I shall call this machine gun Pavlov. But why? It is mine. It's Comrade Stalin's. Or maybe he comes for it. You're gonna get yourself shot one day, you know that? Maybe. But then, if it's not the Germans, then it's gonna be Stalin. <laughs> I'm dead either way. Looks like no effort was aimed for the Panther. He's also here gone for mechanized. Rather delayed choice here could benefit a bit. You know, with the smoke bombs, I think it stays here. Maybe the spotting scopes also benefit him a bit. Obviously, the mechanized gun and deer group is not going to do anything for him because the 250 half tech is still way too expensive and doesn't do anything except, you know, transporting infantry around which can shoot out of it. But that's yeah, still not worth the price. It pants with a barrage, which pretty much misses the target. In fact, the mortar does much better. And there you go. Panther for Refro. Panther for the Feldhahnhalle. As a fun fact, the Feldhahnhalle was an elite Panzer Gunner Division, and they do believe they actually got a Panther Battalion. That's a fun fact. Which was a bit rare for a Panzer Gunner Division. Not a lot of them, in fact, guarded those who did. Usually got them through other means, either because they absorbed a Panzer Brigade that had been dissolved, or in the case of the 11th SS. That was because they got a bunch of Panthers Model Ds, which when I anticipate they'd be operable, they just meant to use them like static, you know, dug in tanks, because they couldn't get them to work, and somehow the 11th SS got them to work, and then formed up its own Panther Battalion. Which they believe they took at least part of it back to Berlin. So occasionally, I mean, they could pull off some sneaky things, but uh, the most part, Panther Gunner Divisions were not exactly supposed to have Panthers, or even Panzers. There we go. Panther out for Refro. Panzerkampfwagen 5. Ausführung A. Ah, a Model A. And now, though, it goes Model D, Model A, Model G. And then there's apparently also the Model F. And as you might be noting, that's not alphabetical. What the hell is going on then? The answer is, I don't actually know. And the Model F didn't even release the action. There's some rumors it might have seen a little bit of action in 1945. I don't know. But there you go, K1 taking damage here from the pack 40. He's almost got it though. Panther versus K1. K1 definitely outmatched by a Panther. He's going to need a tank destroyer here or a lot of T-34s, I think, to stand a chance against the Panther. I'm making he's getting some spotting scopes to the Panther. Yes, indeed. No machine guns yet though. Troops hold here in the center. We've got the Telemine sound as well there from Earthfield. Good work. Panther on the hunt for the K1. Good shot there. High velocity gun. Easily make short work here of the K1's armor. K1 rolling away. Refro in a pretty sticky situation using a lot of ground here. He needs to, I think, make some more focused effort somewhere. And there you go. Panther moves straight to hit through the center. Gets hit in the t -center. He should find the Theodosius. Shot fight at the Panther. Almost got there. The T-70 Panther was supporting, but we could see a damage ending on the Panther, which would be pretty good here. There we go. It's going to need to fix up the Panther pretty schnell. 
Issue to fire halfway down there. Fort Theodosius back hit. Troop ceiling reinforcing. Panzer Werf uh, going to take some time before it can fire again. Conscripts are pressed in the south. And there you go, HC5 tank to start for Theodosius. Panzer going to be reinforcing, almost done, almost at full health too, in fact. Make two pawns bars, actually pretty close up between the two. But Theodosius Panther is so uh, rather outnumbered here. Three to, well, a one to four technically in some ways, the T-Sony problem doesn't count for a lot. Though if it can flank the Panther, the T-70 is actually going to have a chance to do some damage. He needs to be careful on its own here. Shot penetrated, Panther misses. Quickly forced away again. He should probably try and recapture the fuel pond then the aim for an to support the Panther. At least that way and get some firepower out. He should probably try and get off a good Panther. Effort. You know, wipe some of uh, Theodosius' forces here properly. K1 moving in, Panther moving in, Pack 4 nearby as well. Panther from Nietzsche's held, we got Attilus airstrike called in here as well. Comes to there, take direct hit. And they get wiped. Panther needs to be careful, explosion is re here. Still, small victory there for Refero. Air support calling in here. Mortar being suppressed, Pioneers hit. Panther from taking a few hits as well from the cannons. This is looking pretty rough with Refero. Air should find moving in, he needs to get the Pack 4 trained on that. And I guess gets the Panther fixed up again. He can soon go for Stug though, he can soon go for Stug, but meanwhile Theodosius inexorably advances on German positions. Gonna get Rush there and hit with an anti tank grenade, making an easy target here for Rush and tank destroyers. That is pretty bad there for Refro, pretty bad. Need to fix it up there. Half health not looking good. Meanwhile, Theodosius is increasingly controlling most of the map here against the Refero and the Feltan Halle. Panzer going to be moving ahead there. That's only two. Pretty good. Just not very good. There's a tank and air support. Moving the Panther a bit close to the front line here. The still needs to be careful. It doesn't become an easy target here for Russian tank destroyers and whatnot. And moves the pack forward as well. That's a definitely a tactically ill advised move. Now the Panther is a lot of hot water. He's going to have to go for the Stuke here. At least try for it. Pack 4, they almost wiped out again. This is why you generally don't move the pack, by the way, without ensuring there's someone ahead to ensure you don't roll it into a tank. Panther alone healthy. Got a Stuke on the way for the Refro. Panther fast off. The K1 doesn't do anything. Panther they're doing some damage, but it's pretty close here. Low health. K1 is close, so there's a high chance of penetrating the armor here. Panther is down. Doesn't do anything. Pack 40 crude again. K1 misses. HD5 sitting in there. Goes, shoots. Doesn't hit. Main gun now on the K1. The problem is HD5 can easily take it out. Almost got it, but it can survive a lot more shots. Stug almost done. Need to get the Panther moving. Needs to get some troops in there. Shoots at the house. Failed to get through. K1 down. KB1 down. T-54 moving in there. Half H of XT3. Most of the Refro stuff is falling apart. We got the Stug moving in though. But the rear is exposed easily. And that's going to be it for the Panther. There you go. Vetri 2. Stug fires. Misses. Thankfully didn't kill the Panther, that was the T-34. But with that, I mean the Panther just didn't do too not much here for Theodo or Refro here versus Theodosius. Since the problem was by the time it arrived it was quickly, you know, heavily outnumbered. And that regard, going for the Panther for the first was the mistake here for Refro. He should aim for the Panther first, so there's more chance of having a more equal fight because that's really the issue with the Panther. It's expensive, hits late, and you generally want it as fast as possible, so it has a chance of you know, actually not being utterly outnumbered because it's only really where the Panther's good when it sort of has a roughly one on one stance, you know. When there's like three or four tanks out on the field when you got one Panther, the Panther's just not going to, you know, cut it.
which is also why the Panthers are really only good if you're, you're ahead as they are not sort of doing decently as the Oboe Commander Vest because that's where you sort of get those situations where there's not too many other tanks for the Panther to deal with. Pack 40 there destroyed, Stug about, tier victory points so quickly you know flooding out there for Efro. T-34 some sick being fixed up. K1 number 2 are running here for Theodosius. Spotting skirt for the Stoog, not a bad investment. The problem is issue 5 can easily shoot it. There we go. Shot bounced. And we got more support here for Theodosius. Therefore, having anti aircraft support is very much at the mercy of the Red Army Air Force. And there goes Stu down. Mortar wiped him with that. GG game over here for Refro. A loss for the German Army, a victory for the Soviet Union. Overall, I would say some of the issues here for Refro in part boiled down to the fact, well, he just didn't choose a doctor, I mean there's all no sort of greater strategy long term. Also, Mechanized is probably one of the weaker ones in particular. I mean, he only used it for the spotting scopes. It didn't really do him a lot of good. He probably done meta with you know an early lightning war, something else here. Versus the Adosia at times was also too passive, could you know pressure it more and could also mine more. But overall, I think just the way you handle this tier one again, generally don't recommend it. But even then the way you handle it was just particularly inefficient. First a Panzer Werfer, then a Panther. He just really maximized the potential for the Panther to not really have an impact because again the panther is not good if your opponent has a lot of tanks again it lacks the firepower again this is where he wants stooks and the problem was refer only went for that at the very end where you know the panther's gone and then the stook was also severely outnumbered in general you, you don't want a lot of stooks to have a chance so i mean he sort of i would say made a series of strategic mysticism that really sort of just gave the doses the maximum opportunity to just crush Refero. So there were definitely issues there for Refero as the fight went on. He could also maybe benefit from a second Panzer in the Discord or something else. As for Theodosius, overall well played. Good use of harassment, attacks, flanks. Could have used some smoke here and there. Versus Refero, that's definitely, I think, one of his bigger failings. But overall, he played pretty solidly. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, one subscribe to the friends. Share it with everyone. If not, send in the replay room or provide some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Linking. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow for another signing episode. Bye.